Welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Today I'm going to show you how to find the interplanetary launch window using no mods, no calculators, no protractor. All we need is the stock games map view and maneuver node system. Um, I'm going to skip Korea because we don't start with panels and, and um, decouplers, but I'm going to stick to the parts that you get very early in Korea. As you can see I'm just using the, the regular sized tanks, uh, LVT-30s, I'm going to stick some lander legs and a ladder on just for in case we do actually land in this tutorial. And that's it, we're ready to go. Fairly simple rocket. Uh, it's a bit unwieldy, a bit tri tricky to steer because I haven't put any SAS wheels on it. Uh, pitching over straight off the pad just to give it a little bit. With rockets this unwieldy, they tend to fall over and get uncooperative. So we want to pitch them over just, you know, just to keep them falling in the right direction. You can see that I'm dropping the throttle here. I'm trying to keep my G meter at 1G on the way up, that's the easiest way in stock KSP to stay at terminal velocity. At about 15-20 kilometers you can punch it, uh, go to max throttle because you're not going to keep up with terminal velocity at that altitude. So you can, um, I've also been pitching down 10 degrees for every 5 kilometers altitude as best as I can. And here we are in orbit. So that's what the, that's what the launch looks like. Uh, now in case we want to go to the moon, I'll show you how to do that. You just drag your maneuver node out till it touches the moon's orbit. You just want to just touch it for the for the optimal transfer. If you go past it, then it's not optimal, and it's easy as that. We drag the maneuver node around, and there's our moon encounter. Now, as you can see, um, the moon encounter is quite wide. There's a, a large uh, variation in, in burn times that will get you to the moon, and this is why crude methods such as uh, doing your launch when the moon rises in the east actually work, because it really is this big. But we're not going to go to the moon today. That's not what this tutorial is about. We're doing interplanetary. So we're going to get rid of this target and zoom out and have a look. Where do we want to go? Let's go to Duna. What a lovely place. There it is over there. So I'm going to show you how to do this. First off, we need to get an orbit around the sun. I'm going to drop a node here, pull it out until we get to escape. Now, the trick with this is, you want to only barely get escape velocity. You don't want escape plus some, you want to barely get the escape. What this does is, it does is it gives us a parabolic orbit, which means that when we escape, our velocity relative to Kerbin will be very close to zero. Um, which, which basically means that we're in exactly the same orbit as Kerbin itself. Which is what we want for setting up our other maneuvers and finding our burn time. So we want a parabolic escape orbit, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time tweaking this down to we're only barely, barely escaping. Just like this. Now we also want to be escaping in the same direction that Kerbin itself is moving. Um, this is because we're going out, we're going further out to Duna. Um, same for Joule and other outer planets. If you want to go inwards, you want to escape in the opposite direction to Kerbin's movement. Oh, uh, that is behind Kerbin rather than in front of it. So this is pretty good. As you can see I'm pulling the sigils inwards to do fine adjust and here is our parabolic escape orbit with a resulting orbit around the Sun that's almost identical to Kerbin's. This means that we can now do exactly the same thing that we did to get to the Moon. We drop a node, pull up Wapsis up to our desired target and then pull it around and find our intercept. There's our intercept markers coming in over here. So it looks like our intercept's going to be around here somewhere. So that's pretty close, but for an efficient transfer, we want those markers to be sitting right on top of our apoapsis. That means that we're using the least possible amount of fuel to get there. So if our apoapsis goes any higher, then we're using extra fuel. That's basic orbital mechanics, guys. So we're trying to dial in this, this node here to get those markers as close to the apoapsis as possible. When they disappear, that means you, that your apoapsis is actually below the target orbit and you need to push it up just slightly to get those markers back. There, that's pretty close. Now we could leave it at that and do the burn light and do the rest of the tutorial like this, but I'm going to show you that this will actually give us an intercept. If we tweak these a little bit more. Approach is pretty close. I think the Duna's um, sphere of influence is about 50 megameters or so. 
So 600 is not quite there. But we'll have a look. There you go. There's our Duna intercept. Pretty close to the apoapsis. So let's go with that. Now, we're not going to burn. We are not going to execute either of these burns. No. What we're going to do is wait for Kerbin itself to be round at the position of that second node. When Kerbin is there, we get rid of these nodes, make new node, and then burn. This is the plan. So, in order to execute this in the stock game without Kerbal Alarm Clock, which is what I'd usually use, we need to fast forward to the time of that um, second node. So we tab over here, zoom in to get the time. 62 days, 17 hours. So we need to warp for that period of time, but we can't warp when, when we're in low Kerbin orbit that, that fast. It would take forever, so I'll show you a different way to do it. We're going to go back to our ship, we're going to rip off the launch stage, get rid of it, we don't want that. We're just going to grab this little piece here, we're going to test our lander legs at the same time so we can make sure this thing can actually land if we, go, if we decide to land on Duna. We also need to actually launch the ship. So we're going to put our launch clamp on here and head for the pad and launch it. We're just waiting for the physics to start and then we'll drop the legs and launch the ship. What this will allow us to do is keep track of the elapsed time using the mission timer in the top left corner of the window. So here we go, legs, couple, time is running, now we warp. Because we're landed, we can warp as fast as we want. And we've also got a, a timer to keep track of how long it's gone. So we're just going to zoom to the sun because watching Kerbin is a bit visually confusing. So now we can see our timer ticking away, the planets moving around the sun, warp is at max. It would be nice to have slightly higher warp. So we're going to warp until we get to 62 days and 17 hours. Getting there, halfway there. Maybe we need another level of warp. It looks like we might actually be fairly close to Duna at our optimal transfer window. So you get to see what, what the alignment is like. This is this is where the numbers for the protractor come from. Here we go, 62 days. 17 hours, 40 minutes or so. So now that we're at the right time, we can switch back to our other craft, the one that we actually want to go to Duna in. Here we are. So we're going to create that first node again where we escape, but this time we're not going to, we don't want a parabolic escape orbit, we want a hyperbolic, we want to go all the way to Duna in one go. The reason that we want to do this is that when we're close to Kerbin, we're moving very quickly. When we're moving very quickly, we actually get more um, speed for the amount of fuel that we burn. It takes less less fuel to burn up to the speed that we need. So that's why I didn't, for example, um, push this ship into a higher orbit and warp from there. Because then when we actually burned for Duna, it would use more fuel because we were going slower. This is called the Oberth effect, guys. Look it up. So we've gone a bit too far here. We'll pull it back in. That line's red because we've got a moon encounter on the way. Hopefully we can get around that. Um, it, it kind of messes things up a bit. It messes with our timing and, and, and directions and things like that. And in theory we could get a gravity slingshot off it, but for various reasons the slingshot that you get from the moon isn't particularly strong. So usually it's it's not really worth the hassle of dealing with, with what the moon does to your resulting orbit. So I'm just going to tweak this and, and, and hopefully it'll disappear by itself our orbit background so we can go we can skim behind the moon so it'll be kind of out of the way when we're going past that will be nice just looking at these angles here trying to get it all lined up we'll go back out and see where we are in relation to Duna so we've still gone a bit higher so we should be able to pull that in a little bit just to pull our apoapsis down remember that um, we want the apoapsis to just touch the target orbit. There's an intercept. Looks like we're a couple of days early. We could wait a few more days and we would be fine. In fact, it's better to, to burn later rather than earlier, but I'm just going to go with this to show you how to do this in this tutorial. 
So we really want to get that lined up as best as we can. That orange line and that purple line, we want them to both point in the same direction. That looks pretty close there. We'll just zoom out and have a look. Just give it a little tweak there. It turns red because of our Duna encounter. Let me show you. Zoom out. And there it is. Do you know encounter? Periapsis is, is quite high, so we're not actually going to get particularly close to Duna, but we're close enough. We can tweak it on the way there, which I'll show you in the second part of this tutorial. So now we actually need to execute this burn. I checked the, the ship mass a little bit earlier on. You can find it on that window there when you're actually focused on the ship. Uh, we're going to do the majority of the burn with our LV909 engine, which has 50 kilonewtons of thrust. So we can use Newton's equations of motion to find the acceleration. We divide the required delta V, which is shown up here next to our nav ball, by our ship's acceleration and find our burn time. With this particular ship, it's going to be about a minute 20, 80 seconds. Uh, we want to do half before and half after the node. So we're going to zoom up to about 40 seconds before the node and start burning. Now we've got a little bit of fuel left in the uh, second launch stage that we used to get up here, so we're going to burn that off first and then decouple and go the rest of the way on our actual um, ship, transfer ship. Here we are coming up on the node. Now I'm actually going to point at prograde rather than the node because if we're adding a radial component to our burn then we're wasting fuel because burning prograde is far more useful for gaining orbital velocity than burning radial. So as you can see I'm, I'm pointing prograde while doing this burn. Switching over here to check the fuel and I get terrible, terrible frame rate when Kerbin is in view. So I need to rotate the view around. So as soon as I can't see Kerbin, it runs much nicer. So we have to couple that launch stage and off we go in our burn proper. Timing isn't hugely critical. You don't really need the maneuver node there. I'm getting rid of it right now because it's in the way and it just confuses the issue. What's actually important is our Duna intercept. So we're going to zoom out and wait for our escape velocity, wait to achieve our escape velocity, and then watch our orbit intersect with Duna's orbit and find that intercept with Duna itself. Should be any minute now. Here we go. Here's our escape velocity. Must have changed colour because we avoided that moon intercept. So we're just going to feather it in now because Duna is quite small. You need to be fairly delicate to find it. Even the tiniest little squirts of fuel still moving fairly quickly. There it is. There's our Duna intercept. So we're at the right place. Our periapsis is just on Duna's orbit. We couldn't, we couldn't do a more efficient transfer if we tried. If you use Protractor, this is where you'll burn. If you use Mechjeb, this is where Mechjeb will burn for you. Hang in there for part two.